the situations of people who we know who are suffering with different illnesses and their health. What is, what is God seeking to do now, right? That's what, remember, that's what we read that he told the disciples. He said, listen, go heal the sick, right? In essence, what he said is, listen, make people's situations better now. Now. In what, and watch this, in whatever way you can, what has he given you? What, what tools, what skill sets, um, um, even if it's just your ability to pray, what has he already put in your hands that you can use right now to make the lives of other people better so that what? So that when they feel like, man, anytime I get around Sister Williams or Sister Davenport or Sister Brown or anybody else in the church, for some reason my life always seems to be better. And now they can ask the question, Sister Williams, why is my life better when I get around you? And then it's, oh, well, let me tell you, because the God that I serve, so on and so forth, right? So if we can learn how to make people's lives better, whether that be spiritually, whether that be relationally, whether that be in their education, their health, whatever God has put, given you the skills to do, if we can begin to say, God, help me to show your power through what you've put in my life now. Help pull, pull down that power. Now, don't just let what I'm doing uh, be effective, but I ask that the power of your Holy Spirit would be in that thing, making it even more powerful than a, as if I was just doing a service for them. And allow them to see something that causes them to question and say, listen, whatever it is that this person from Penuel SDA has, I need some of it. Amen. And we have that ability, we have that ability. But we have to live that thing. It's, an, it's something intentional that we have to tap into. It doesn't happen by accident. We have to intentionally ask God, God, show me how to live this kind of life. So in Sab oh, good, um, thank you, God, for reminding me of this. I meant to, to, to point this out. The, to, in Sabbath school, it was pointed out, right, about, about um, I wrote the thought down. I'm not, I bet you I'm not going to find it now, though, watch. But, but, but. Living that life that would allow people to, to, to see in us what God is doing, right? And to intentionally being that person of faith in their, in, in their life. I forgot, man, the thought slipped me, but God, if you want me to remember it, bring it back to my remembrance and I'll, and I'll share it. But that's the essence of the story, y'all. That is the essence of the story. And so we then know what's going to happen as the, the verse goes on. Uh, I'm sorry, as the passage goes on. Oh, right, watch this. And so if we skip on down, because I don't want to take too long. If we skip on down, Mary eventually comes and asks Jesus some of the same questions that Martha asked. Verse 34 then says, and Jesus said, where have ye laid him? They said unto him, Lord, come and see. And so my question to anybody who's listening right now is, where have you laid those situations or those opportunities that you thought were dead? Mm -hmm. Where have you laid them? And I want you to start considering and asking yourself, does God want me to start showing and bringing those things back in front of him so that he can begin to resurrect those things now and bring those things back to life? Right? What situations did you think were dead? What relationships did you think were dead? What else did you think was dead that you need God to begin to resurrect? And watch this. Jesus said, if I skip down to verse 39, Jesus said, take ye away the stone. Right? So there was a stone in front of the grave that Lazarus was, was in. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, saith unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he hath been dead four days. Right? So not, as, not only is the situation dead, but the situation is beginning to rot and stinks, right? I'm in a smelly situation. And even then, Jesus says, Jesus saith unto us, said I not unto thee that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God? Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid, and Jesus lifted his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. Oh, and I, yeah, I wanted to point that out. Watch this. Father... He hasn't even asked the question yet, right? And yet he says, Father, I, ask, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. He didn't say, Father, I thank thee that thou will hear me, but thou hast heard me already. And so understand that God has already, like God already has heard what you're going to try to bring to the table. 
He's foreseen it. And so then Jesus continued and said, I know that thou hearest me always, but because of the people which stand by, I, which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus saith unto him, Loose him and let him go. Loose him and let him go. And so, and, and there's so many aspects of this story that we can go deeper into. But watch this. Two things, and, I'll, I'll, and, and that'll be it. The first thing is only Jesus can bring things to life. And that's why we're seeking him. And that's why we're seeking him. But here's the second thing. Although Jesus is the one that can bring things to life, he has still asked that we would partner with him in setting the captives free. Look at some of the things he does here. He asks that the people would be the one to roll the stone away. They had a job to do in Lazarus, not just being alive. He was going to bring Lazarus to life, but he asked the people to pave the way that, that Lazarus would be able to leave the tomb. He, and then he was still, Lazarus was still bound, right? And he still says, listen, I, I, I want the people to, 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 I want you to unbound um, Lazarus, right? I brought him to life, but he's alive but still bound. I want you to be the one to, to uncover him. He probably couldn't even see. I want you to be the ones to help him to see. You see what I'm saying? So, so, so and then I'll leave it also with this, this third one. I, I forgot to mention this before. But there's two things that Jesus had even said when he was confronting Martha. He said, not only that I am the resurrection, but he said that I am the life. And so what I thought about, the imagery that came to mind when I thought about this thing is that the resurrection being, listen, this is just a moment. I, when I resurrect you, it happens in a moment. But then I am the life. I am now also the sustainer. Right? I am the sustainer. And so God not only wants to bring the situation to life, but he also wants that thing to experience sustenance being able to be sustained, longevity of that life. And so, Father God, we have learned a few principles from you this morning about um, um, the fact that the resurrection that we need in our lives, yes, we know that there will be an ultimate day where you re resurrect and restore all things, Lord, uh, but the, the, the power of the gospel is that you have allowed us to bring those things to the table through your might, even right now. And you have said that you will not only resurrect, you will not only partner with us in resurrecting, but then you would also allow us uh, to, to partner in us, with us for sustenance, Father God, for continual life and for continual growth. And so while you are the one that actually does everything, for some reason you said that you would trust man to be partners with you in this, in, the, in, in, in this thing called salvation, Lord, which means that we can be excited because it means that you trust us. With all the faults that we come with, with all the baggage that we come with, for some reason you trust us. And so we ask now that we would believe that the God of the universe trusts us to do our part and is actually counting on us to do our part that, that those who are dead might come to life, that those who are bound might be set free, that those who are sick might be made whole, that those who are poor might be made rich, uh, for those who feel lonely might eventually find a family, Lord, uh, that, that those who are experiencing uh, lack would experience restoration, Lord. And luckily for us, Father God, we don't have to rely on our own power to do this. But we have access to the one who is infinite and the one who has told us to ask and to seek him that these things might come to pass. So from this day forward, Father God, let us not live um, as, if, as if we are limited human beings, Lord, but we ask that you would help us to tap into the one who is unlimited. Not for our own glory, Lord. Even though, Lord, we ask that we would reap some of the benefits, Father God. We are not, uh, we are not afraid. That, like, we want to live well, Father God. We want to experience a good life, Father God. But more importantly, 
we would like that your glory would be made manifest in all the world, starting with those who are around us and then spreading on to those that are around them and then those that are around them, Father God. And so we ask that you would help us to combat the, 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 the evil that we see in the world, Father God. Yes, we understand that the world is continually getting worse and worse and worse and worse, but you have designed it that your people would be able to also to combat against what the world is doing as we continue to get better and better and better in you, Father God. Help us to realize that that's something that you want for us, Father God, for us to continually to get better and to reach the fullness of what you have designed the purpose for our lives to be. These things we ask in your most holy name. And watch this, Father God. We thank you in advance that you will do it. And we thank you in advance that you will allow us to believe and that we would walk in intentional belief from this day forward. In your most holy name we pray. Amen.